Home by Another Way, A Christmas Story by Barbara Brown Taylor. Matthew 2, 1 through 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the King of the Jews? For we observed his star at the rising and have come to pay him homage. I hope you enjoy this story as much as I do. Once upon a time, there were three wise men who were sitting in their own countries, minding their own business, when a star lodged in the right eye of each of them. You can kind of see it right there. <laughs> the star was so bright that none of them could tell whether it was burning in the sky or in their imagination. But they were wise enough to know it did not matter all that much. The point was something beyond them was calling them. And it was the tug that they had been waiting for all their lives. Each in his own country had tried books, tried magic, tried astrology. One had lived on nothing but dried herbs and boiled water. Another had spent his entire fortune learning how to read and write in ancient languages. The third had learned to walk on hot coals, though he, it did nothing for him beyond the great sense of relief when it had ended. Despite their efforts, all three of them felt that something was missing. They were all glad for a reason to get out of town. <laughs> Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Which was clearly where the star was calling them, out away from everything they knew and how to manage and how to survive, out from under their reputation they had built for themselves, the high expectations, the disappointing returns. So they set out one day, one by one, each believing that they were the only one with the star in its eyes, until each one ran into each other on their road to, Jeru to Jerusalem. From a distance, each thought the other was, the, um, was a mirage at first, a twinkling reflection made of vapor and heat. But as they drew near to each other, they saw the star had they saw the star they had in common, like a tattoo or a secret handshake, something that made them brothers before they spoke. They all believed that the star was leading them to Jerusalem and made perfect sense because they had every reason to believe they, uh, they were on their way to meet a king. They had no trouble gaining entrance into the palace. They looked rich and they had enough to get they looked rich enough to get them to have a royal audience. But the king they met was something of a disappointment. He was lumpy and rumpled and he had terrible breath. His skin looked funny, like a funny orange color and sickly, as if his bile had gotten the best of him. The guards on either side of him shook with fear of their king, so much that the spears rattled against their, she their shields. Without even comparing notes, the wise men knew he was n not the king or the person they were looking for. Um, do you know of any other king? They had asked. He had been picking at his fingernails until then, letting them know how bored he was. But their question got his attention. He looked right at them for the first time. That was when he saw the star in each of their eyes. His own eyes 
grew perfectly round like the eyes of a snake. The king asked the wise men if he would uh, excuse himself for a moment. Then he stepped into his private chapel to confer with his clergy. They whipped out their old reference books, which smelled like mold, and told the king what he wanted to know. Yes, they said, there was something in the book of Micah about a new ruler for Israel. But nothing to get excited about. It was short. It had been there for a long time, and it was unlikely that the men in the other room were fulfilling this prophecy. But sure, why not? Send the wise men to Bethlehem to check it out, to save the king a little money instead of doing his own research. So that was what the king did. He gargled, combed his hair, and went back to tell the wise men they should go to Bethlehem at once with his blessings. On one condition, that they would come back and tell him who his successor was, that he could um, like um, send, send them flowers. His breath smelled like pine saw when he said it, which made the wise men feel a little queasy. They knew something was not quite right. But once they were back out into the night air, they could see the star again. And that put their mind to rest. They followed it right to the doorway of a one-room house in Bethlehem. It was a perfectly nice place, modest but well-built, and not the kind of place where they had expected to find a king. A dog was sniffing a wood, a wood pile under the eaves in hopes of a mouse. Someone was practicing the lute next door, going over the same notes again and again. The smell of dinner was still in the air. Wheat cakes cooked on a griddle, greased in sheep's fat. Lentils and lots of garlic and rice. The place looked so simple, they might have never chosen it themselves. But since the star had chosen it for them, they knocked at the door. When it opened, a couple standing behind it almost died of fright. Not that the wise men noticed. With their arms full of gifts, they crowded into the small space, bumping their turbans on the rafters and snagging their robes on the rough furniture. You can see him bumping his head there. All they could see was a baby who was not afraid and whose right eye shone with the same star that they had seen before they left home. It was him, whoever he was. They did not have a clue, but they knew what to do. They got on their knees and bowed their heads. Then, they gave him the things that they had brought for him, gold, frankincense, and mirth. All the wrong things they could see now, things that he had no use for. They should have brought him goat's milk, a warm blanket, something shiny to hang above his crib. But how could they have guessed? The child's parents were very grateful and gracious. They thanked the strangers for their expensive gifts and held them up for the child to see. Then, to the wise men's complete surprise, the child's mother picked him up and handed him around so that each of them held the damp, soft, living weight in their arms. When they finished admiring him, she took the baby back, nursed him, and put him to bed. Then before the light coming through the window of the house had, in turn, had entirely gone out, the three wise men fell asleep right where they sat. Aw, 
That's so cute. In the morning, when they woke, the wise men could not find their star anymore. They searched each other's eye, but the star was gone. Frantically, they looked in all the corners and under the chairs. The, ma the baby's mother even shook his blankets, but still no stars. Soon the wise men calmed down and said, Never mind. We do not need them anymore. They had found what they were looking for, something they could not lose. As much as they hated to, they added, they had better be on their way. They would not be going through Jerusalem, they said. All three of them had woken from the same identical dream, warning them to steer clear of the city. If anyone in Jerusalem knew anything at all, they would be here instead of there. Besides, none of the wise men's old maps worked anymore. They would have to find a new way home. So the wise men picked up their packs, which were lighter than before. Then they lined up the front, they lined up in front of the baby to thank him for the gifts he had given them. What in the world are you talking about? The baby's mother said, laughing. For the scent and weight and skin of the baby, the first wise man said, who had no interest in living on herbs anymore. For the home and the love here, said the, said the second wise man, who could not remember how to say it in an ancient language. For a really great story, said the third wise man, who thought that telling it might do a lot more for him than walking on hot coals. Then the wise men walked outside, stretched, kissed the baby goodbye, and went home by another way. The Christmas Story the shining light or star. Blessings. May you remember the Christmas story always. <laughs>